couple of lions and a traitor. Well, hello you gorgeous mother truckers and fellow rebels and welcome to another video. Well, even ex-members of the Labour Party you just are salivating at the opportunity to get rid of people and throw them in prison. So let's get straight into the article. So, Sir Keir Starmer should have called out racism of rioters earlier, says Thangam Debonair. The former Labour MP tells Electrical Dysfunction, Electoral Dysfunction podcast that the language used by politicians to describe the rioters let them off the hook. Really? Did it really? Hmm. So, is that racism both ways, or is it the standard definition of racism where you can't be racist to white people? Yeah, I wonder. Any case, so, Sir Keir Starmer should have labelled the recent riots in England racist earlier than he did. No, Thangam Debonair said, what a stupid name. The former Bristol Central, well, there you go, Bristol Central MP, so she was distraught to see the riots unfold across the UK at the start of this month. Yeah, but didn't say anything when the BLM protests were there, where the Sir Colston statue was cut down and thrown in, in the harbour and all that chaos. You were very silent then. Very, very silent. Like an awful lot of uh, Labour MPs. It was all Black Lives Matter. It was all peaceful protests, not riots. Yeah. But apart from that, yeah, so you're already talking rubbish. Miss Debonair, who was the Shadow Cultural Secretary for Sir Keir's Shadow Cabinet before the election called, said, as a mixed-race woman, oh, God, here we go, she wanted to name the riots as race rights. They weren't. They were initially because of three children getting stabbed by a first-generation immigrant at a Taylor Swift concert, and then continued to go on being fueled by your own leader, protecting the Muslim community, his words, not mine, and making it worse, because you are just refusing to listen to the general concerns and worries about immigration. But, of course, we're all just racist because you're a mixed-race rubbish bullshit. Ah, speaking on Beth Rigby's electoral dysfunction podcast, well, there's another stable human being. Miss Debonair said it felt like a different time has come back. No, it hasn't. And I wanted people to name the rights as race rights because they weren't. They weren't anti-immigration rights. Yes, they were. They were racist rights by racists. No, they weren't. That's the typical standard of deflecting the issue. I'm not going to talk about the issue. Far-right violence. No, it oh God, broke out in towns and cities across the UK in the wake of stabbing a three that left three girls dead. Murdered. Murdered by a first-generation immigrant. But of course, you don't say that on July 29th. False rumours were circulated online claiming Sigler was a asylum seeker arrived on the boat by the UK. Okay, he wasn't. But he was first-generation. And surely, that's even worse but they won't mention that because that then blows hole, their hole in there. Oh, they want to be here to live and integrate. No, they don't. If it's first and second generation immigrants who were born here who were doing this, then the system's failing and they don't want to integrate. They are our enemy. They've been told that we're their enemy. and But you won't go like that. As the riots gained pace, Sakir labelled them far right. Wrong. What he did was he called everybody who dared have a, a genuine legitimate concern far right. Again, I will reiterate, violence doesn't solve anything. If you're writing, if you're throwing bricks at people, especially at the police, you deserve to be done with the full force of the law. But that also applies to the other side, who would be on the line, who police officers said, don't worry, we're here to protect you. They're allowed to get away with it. They're also the only ones ever filmed running around with machetes and knives and other weapons. Yeah, where other people who were on the street were just, like, on the street, weren't carrying anything. But, of course, it's a race riot. Yeah, but I don't see you um, condemning the Hair Hill stuff. I don't see you condemning the stuff that happened 20 minutes up the road from where I live in Birmingham. No, you're silent on that bullshit, aren't you? Yeah, they, that was one race, but it's the protected race. It's the protected qualities, isn't it? Unbelievable. While denouncing gangs of thugs who were taking part in the disorder, but only one side, not the other. The other side are counter-protesters, who are the ones who were the armed ones. They're the ones who were carrying weapons. They were the ones who were violently attacking anyone they could find. But it's the far-right thugs and the gangs of thugs, but only, only the far-right thugs will protect the Muslim community because they're all right. 
In a TV address, he said, people in this country have right to be safe, and yet we've seen Muslim communities targeted, attacks on mosques and other minority communities, Nazi salutes in the streets, attacks on the police, wanton violence alongside racist rhetoric, so no, I won't shy away from calling what it is far-right thuggery. No, you full of shit. What about it the other way? What about the countless videos where you've got Muslims telling police to go away, we'll deal with it, when the police in Birmingham left it wide open and didn't turn up. The only thing that was there were two people with drones. When the car that got smashed up on those videos was done outside Stetchford Police Station. When that mob, armed, walked past Stetchford Police Station and all they had was two blokes operating a drone. They never turned up. They weren't interested. They'd talked to the community leaders and it was okay. On that night, Yardley, um, Borsley Green, and coming down the Coventry Road towards where I live, we were left completely and utterly on our own with zero backup from the police. But it's the far right that are the problem, yeah? With their Nazi salutes. I've done a video showing some of them saying, waving a knife, slashing the Union flag, setting it on fire, and pissing on it. But of course it's us. We're, we're the problem, yeah? We're the problem. These idiots. Absolute idiots. Ms. Debonair, who lost the seat to the Green Party, well, I bet that fucking hurt, represented it in Parliament in 2015. While she understood why politicians had chosen to brand these involved as thugs, she did not agree with the Labour because it let people off the hook. No, it didn't let people off the hook. One thing that's troubling is the Labour, she said. I understand why it was chosen to call them mindless thugs, but I don't think it's helpful because it wasn't mindless. People make choices of all sides, you racist fuck, because that's what you're being. You're being the racist there. For me, I'm afraid to say, it, and I say with respect to my colleagues who are using that language, I get where they are, but it lets them off the hook. No, we, oh, God, you are so, I mean, yeah, and of course, the only picture, yeah, there's a dog attacking uh, uh, a far-right thug. Mm, yeah, notice how you never show any of the Asians doing what they do. Uh, the, the Alan Snap, no, 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 because it's only one side that's doing all this, right? Just one side. Put to her that this is language used by the Prime Minister, Mr. Ebenezer, I disagree with it. I understand why he used it. I think taking law and order approach was right. Really? Really? You mean the one-sided law approach, which I will continue to demonstrate on this channel and other channels are doing the same. I think he was absolutely right. No, he wasn't. But I think two things can be true at the same time. Take law and order approach, but also name racism as racism because it wasn't. You're the one who's bringing race into it. You're the one who's being racist. It's as simple as that. But also, um, otherwise we're treating a whole bundle of people who are not racist, but do want to discuss migration in the same boat. But you don't listen to people talking about migration. You just want to call all of them bigots and racists. Describing the impact of the rights had on her personally, none whatsoever. Absolutely none. Miss Debonair said, although she was in India at the time, she still felt scared. She wasn't even in the country. You Gaslighting piece of shit. How can you feel scared? It didn't affect you. I'll tell you what's scared. What's scared is having a, a roaming gang of thugs of Alan Snack Bar literally 20 minutes up the road and you spending half the night sat up waiting just in case somebody turned up. In case they came early because we had no help from the police. That's scared, you gaslighting piece of shit. I was in India at the time, so you weren't scared. You weren't even bothered by it. You're full of shit, you gaslighting dickhead. Here we go. Get ready for the racism. I was so relieved to be in India amongst brown people. Racist. I was texting lots of friends, and the pain and fear of just seeing a group of angry white men very obviously targeting brown people because they're brown. No, they weren't, you gaslighting piece of shit. No, they were not targeting brown people because they were brown. Now, is that the same brown people who were targeting white people just up the road from me because they were white? Oh, but that's okay, is it, Miss Debonair? Yeah, right, whatever. It is visceral. It's also visceral how it makes you feel when, you, when white allies are yours and you feel you haven't quite got it yet. God, God you're the biggest racist person here. You, you people on the left are always everything you scream everybody else is. She added, I can't get up in the morning and cry because they're racist, because seeing that was scary. Bullshit. You're the racist here. You're the one who keeps bringing colour of skin into it. And yes, I wanted him, because I say earlier, I really did. 
because it makes me feel validated. I went to my parents to recognise what was going to us. Brown people, racist. Who are patriots. Really? Are they really? Are they really? And believe in the law and order and believe in this country. No, they don't. I've shown you hundreds of accounts and I will continue to show you what you're saying is bullshit. What you're saying is the standard defence that you seem to have is, oh, well, no one's like that at all. Explain how the brown people are patriots and believe in the law and want to believe in this country to the parents of the three children stabbed in Southport. Go on. Please explain how the brown people, how they feel that they are believing the law to the wife of the lieutenant colonel who got stabbed, which everybody's forgotten about. Explain that to them. Explain how the, how the brown people want to believe in the law and order and believe in the country to the guy who's just stabbed, who got stabbed, father in Ireland, soldier who got stabbed by a brown guy. Explain that. As I keep saying, make it make sense. Make it make sense, because at the moment, you're not. To date, more than 1,000 arrests have been made in connection with the unrest. According to the National Police Chief Council, a total of 372 adults have been charged of which 99% of them are for things that would normally have probably got you a caution, at best. But no, not now. Now we have to stamp down, but only on one side of the coin, of course, because that's how it works, isn't it now, ladies and gentlemen? Because that's where we are. And that's not me saying that. Keir Young Jum, or whatever his name is, Keir Stalin, whatever you want to call him, our illustrious leader, our dictator, a tyrant, whatever. The idiot who's in charge of this country said, we will protect Muslim communities. And the second you did that, you made a side. And your side was with one section and at the expense and ostracization and damnation and demonization of everybody else on the other side. And you can't understand why people are annoyed when you get idiots like you saying, I felt really scared. I mean, no, I mean, I was in India, in India at the time, surrounded by other brown people because you don't have white people there because I'm as racist as everybody else. Uh, but I felt scared because I wasn't there. Yeah. When you haven't had it literally on your doorstep because you'd never have it on your doorstep. I'm sick of these gaslighting knobheads going on. Oh, we were scared when they were going on. They were nowhere near you. You had no effect, effect on you because you just sit there gaslighting everybody else. Like Jess Phillips, who's apologised for stirring it all up. Where if that had been me doing that, which I didn't at the time, because there's no point. Well, actually at the time, I didn't have time to do that because I was sat here looking after two kids who were terrified and a, and a wife who was at work who was coming back late at night. Also, I was worried about um, what was going to happen on that night because the police were nowhere to be seen. That's when you got the right to sit and say you were scared. That's when you got the right to say anything. Until then, please... Sit down with your gaslighting bullshit and shut up. Any case, enough of that. I'm done. So, until the next one. And this world's great nation, you're by time, with this crush